Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett and it is The Ramble and we go on from now until midnight tonight, uh, Eastern Daylight Time uh, and uh, we will get to our um, citizen panel in about, oh, I don't know, 50 minutes from right now. Yes, 50 minutes from right now. As you know, for the last three weeks, uh, we have been playing a rather long interview that we did with uh, Jack Garfine. Uh, so you know who Jack Garfine is. Jack Garfine was a very famous Broadway director, motion picture director, uh, teacher at the Actors Studio, uh, has had an illustrious career, which I hope we will get to on some future date because it involves him discovering... Uh, James Dean, for example, being the last person to see James Dean alive. All right? So, but that, that is not the story he's here to tell now. It's how his life started off. And as we found out in the first two uh, episodes of this interview, uh, it was one in which he was evading the Nazis and trying to keep from going to concentration camps and his mother and uh, keeping him out and helping him out and so on. And um, when we last left off, uh, the train pulls up and he can see a sign outside that says Auschwitz. Now, this next episode, if you've never heard any of the other episodes, is, is something you absolutely must hear. It's a must hear. And we're going to put it up after the show's over. It's going to be uh, posted just like any of our other shows. And then in a few days, I'm going to post the whole hour and 50 minute interview so that you can pass it on to friends and tell them where they can find it and watch it because it's an important story and it's an important tale to tell with a man I love very much. So ladies and gentlemen, here now the continuation and the finale, 50 minutes worth with Jack Garfine. So we return to Jack Garfine and uh, uh, a phenomenal story. I gotta tell you something, Jack, before we go further, you know, when I was younger, uh, my, when I was younger, yeah. uh, my my father-in-law and my uh, mother-in-law were both uh, Jews uh, escaping uh, and uh, telling stories, phenomenal stories of heroism and everything around the around a Passover table, and they were Bundists, and um, but you know we'd hear about people who did this and fought in the underground and in Paris and so on. And my wife said to me, why don't you record these people? Because I had a videotape yeah. recorder and I never got around to it. And then they all passed. And to this day, I felt kind of guilty that I didn't <laughs> interview somebody on this. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now I've got you to help me assuage my guilt. Oh, as well, it were. great, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, now, this is a heck of a place to pick up the story, but you were getting off the cattle car, and there's Auschwitz. Yeah. You're there. Uh, Auschwitz is probably the most iconic, I guess, of the concentration camps. You were in 11 of them total yeah. through no, this no, whole story. The, the worst is the last one I was in, Bergen-Belsen. Bergen-Belsen. Yeah. yeah. And also people who had been in Auschwitz for a long time felt that Bergen-Belsen was the worst. I wasn't there, you know. I mean, I was in Auschwitz for about a couple of weeks or three weeks. Yeah. But uh, the ones that were there for a long time in, in Belzen felt Belzen. Yeah. That was the worst. Now oh, Auschwitz, you get off the you get off the cattle. I car. didn't know it was Auschwitz. I just knew yeah. we were getting off. And you got off. And what is your first memory of of getting out of that cattle car? I mean, uh, the shouts of the uh, couples saying uh, and also seeing the SS men with dogs with uh, what do you call it, the wolf dogs yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, German shepherds she German shepherds yeah. standing in the back and the couples yelling just yelling everybody 
uh, uh, over 46 and under 16 over to the side. Only people between 16 and 46 stay there, right? Everybody else to the side. And you're how old at this time? I'm 12. 12? 12. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, oh no, 13, excuse 13. me. 13. I was bar mitzvah, yeah, 13. And, uh, and what happened was the cop was uh, yelling like that. And uh, some, everybody was trying to do whatever they were yelling, but my yeah. mother, again, grabbed one of the Jewish couples and said, you're a Jew, tell me what's going on here. And he ran away because if the Nazis noticed that he was talking or was telling them what's happening, they'd kill him. You know, they'd take mm -hmm. him back of the train and shoot him. So then she grabbed another guy and said, you're a Jew, tell me what's going on here. The guy said, leave the children, leave the old people. And he ran away. I'll never forget my mother's look. I'll never forget. She was trying to grasp something like that. And then she went and grabbed another guy. You're a Jew, tell me what's happening, what's going on? Leave the children, leave the old people. And he ran away. And, and unlike other people who didn't do that or didn't believe or anything, my mother <laughs> takes me and says, and he says to me, get over there with the men you know, the bonds mm -hmm. between 46 and 16. And I again felt, oh, she was protecting my sister because I always felt she was a favorite. And I thought, what, what harm is there for kids? They're not gonna do anything to a kid, okay? Right. So I said, I, I said no, Mama, I'm not going. I wanna stay with you. I'm staying with you. And she, then went and pushed me away and said, I hate you, I never wanted to have you. You were born, but I didn't want to have you as a child. I always disliked you and I don't want to see you anymore. Get away from me and don't ever come back here and pushed me to the men's side. And I looked back at her and I remember my exact thought, I hope she drops dead or if not, I'll die, and that'll make her really yeah. feel badly. And then, amazing thing, uh, we stand on line with the men, I stand on line with the men. And again, unlike the Hollywood movies, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mangala, the doctor. Mangala? Yeah, very, he looked at me. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. you're in a line, yeah. I guess Mengele is checking out each of the men. Yeah, yeah. And I come up to him, and he looks at me kindly. And he looks, and he says, uh, he touches my face like this. Yeah. He touches me. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. this. How old are you? Out of the blue. I don't know where it came from. I said 16. Right? He looked at me like, is that so? When a man behind me, with a stubble of a beard, said, Your Excellency, he and I, this kid and I are famous mosaic artists all over Europe. I didn't know what a mosaic artist even was. And Mengele went, just looked at my eye like that, patted me, and sent me to how, how did you know this was Mengele? Did he identify himself? I didn't himself? know. I just knew he was a doctor. I found out later that that was Mengele. I just knew it was a guy who decided, just looked at you to decide something. I didn't know what was going on about gas chamber. Uh, it, 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 so anyway. Did you find this out in later years or did you find this out? At, uh, oh no, at I, found it, I found it out at the end of the war. Mm -hmm. Already during the war. And then you've seen pictures of Mengele since, and that was the man. What? You, you've seen pictures of Mengele since. Yeah, yeah. And that's the man that you saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so what happened was he went to, pointed me and the guy to the left. And I turned to the guy and I said, 
what did, what did you say? What, did you, what is this? Because I never knew what a mosaic artist was, you know. And he knew the problem, so he ran right into the camp. Do you know what I did? I turned around. I went back to tell that nice Nazi officer <laughs> <laughs> that I lied. I wasn't 16. I was only 13 years old. When a Jewish couple walked over, I said, where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, I'm sorry. I lied to that German officer and tell them, told him I was 16. I'm not 16. I'm 13. He took a stick, hit me over the head, get the hell in there, pushed me into the camp, right? Okay, a couple of things here. Number one, your mother saved your life. About what? Your mother saved yeah. your life. By, making, well, by, by kids, doing it in the, in the most horrible way she could. coming up on April 15th. Yeah. So my kids on April 15th always send me a happy birthday. Really? Yeah. But she, she literally alienated you to get you to go somewhere else and yeah, save yeah. your life. Yeah. Knowing that she could do nothing about herself, knowing that she could do nothing about your sister. Yeah. 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 But what happened was yeah. my cousin, who was 18, a woman, her, she was... My, my mother's sister's daughter. So she went, oh, she told me the story when I met her after the war. She said, I went over to your mother. I said, listen, my mother will take care of Hadi, which is my sister. And, and you go with me because I'm alone. And my mother, she said, was about to do that when your sister pulled her hand and said, don't leave me, mommy. And she looked at me, she, my cousin said, I can't go. I'm not going. I'm staying. Yeah. So, so, and then the second person to save your life was this capo who said, don't go back to that guy and tell him that. Yeah, yeah. Right. But now, the Orthodox Jews have a story. In, in the Oxford story of the Holocaust, they heard the story. They never talked to me. But the reporter got in touch with me. He said, did you hear the story? I said, no. This is the story. It's the story according to Orthodox Jews. Is that um, uh, this little boy, Jacob, was online in Auschwitz. And Elijah answers the prayers of a mother. Mm -hmm. And he arrived with a stubble of a beard. And he has a stubble of a beard. And he answers the prayers, and so he saved this little boy, okay? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, fine. Leave it to the orthodoxy to find <laughs> a miracle. <laughs> to find a miracle. I got to do with that. Now, it's true. I never saw that guy again. Yeah. I tried to see him. I tried to find him. I never found him again. And now, okay, so wait, how many years later? Uh, let's see, 30 years later. My second marriage, you know, 40 years. I, um, what happened is we have a Passover Seder, mm -hmm. yeah. okay? And um, I lived in Madrid, no, I lived in Paris, and my ex-wife lived in, in Madrid. And I had to bring all the stuff from Paris. They still didn't have those things, you know, so I mm -hmm. brought matzahs, wine, everything. We set up a Seder. And my ex-wife says, oh my God, Jack, I have no candlesticks. And then she went and looked and she found two plastic candlesticks. And she lit them, okay? And we had the Passover Seder. My daughter was, uh, I think maybe, what, a year old or something. Mm -hmm. but she was already asleep in the bed at four o'clock in the morning. Anna wakes me up, Jack, look at the ceiling. I look at the ceiling is black. We run into my daughter's room, black under the, under the nose, you know, but she's breathing and we run into the room. What happened? The candle, the plastic candlestick oh, wow. melted and the tablecloth caught fire. And guess what? Stopped at the cup of Elijah. 
Uh, modern so, day miracles. <laughs> so we said, if you have, if you ever have a boy, yeah. his name is going to be Elijah. And so my second boy, his name is Elias. He's named after. Me. Let's get back to Auschwitz. You were there for two weeks. What? You were at Auschwitz for two weeks. You said. Yeah. And well, the first day was second day. It was amazing. I thought my father was dead. Yeah. You know. And I'm and I'm little, so I'm in the front row. And the guy who counts the people and reports back mm -hmm. how many there are comes down the line counting. And as he moves down the line, I recognize it's my father. Wow. He stops in front of me. You know what he said? What did he say? What are you doing here? Because he was... A Zionist leader, he worked for the underground. Yeah. He sent the Polish Jews to Palestine, took all sorts of risks. And the reward was that if you were in the underground yeah. and you did that, mm -hmm. your kids would be sent to Palestine wow. to be safe. What happened was that was arranged when the Hungarian Jews found out about it. Mm -hmm. Two kids, rich Jews, that money. Two kids went out under my name and my sister's name to Palestine, okay? So, uh, when I said to him, and he said, is your mother and your sister? I said, yes, they, they went to the old age home, because that's what we were told. Mm -hmm. That it was an old age home and they go to an old age home. And I noticed tears appearing in my father's eyes when the assessment yelled, what is going on there? Because he saw him stopping, you know. And so he went on counting. And then the barracks at night, he took a big risk because you're not allowed to go into. Otherwise, came to see me. And, and, I, and he said, he wanted to know about the rest of them. I said, yeah, they all went to the old age. So he said that he was going to find a way to join me in the transport to go with me. Now, if you did that illegally, and if they found out it was father and son, you were killed, okay? I knew that, I knew. And I said, no, no, you're not going. But I didn't think of that. I said, no, no, you gotta stay here because mother and, and my sister are here. You gotta stay here with them and watch them. I'll be fine, I'll, I'll take care of myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, then he came back once more, the night before we were leaving, but before I was, I was take, gonna be taken to a labor camp, you know. Yeah. He came that night, and uh, he said to me, "Now one thing, Yankush, never cry. No matter what they do to you, don't ever cry." So. It went to my head, and I never, no matter what, they beat me, they hit me, so I was fine. Because if you cried and thing, they felt, oh, there's nothing, you know. They'd hit you more. You know? and, uh, and so I was put into a cattle car. And that was the last you saw, your father or your mother yeah. or your sister. And then my best friend, Oscar, Es escape. I mean, what happened was uh, he arrived in Auschwitz, and after the end of the war, he found out that I was alive. So he came to see me because he ran into my father. And my father said to him, if you ever see Yankush, tell him I haven't had a day of rest since he left. Yankush was your name. And that was it. That was it. That was it. And so where were you off to then? Well, they sent me to a labor camp. And so I had to go out early at 6 o'clock in the morning to work on railroads, building railroads. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I was transferred from there to another camp, all in the same vicinity, called Merzbachtal. And there, there again went out to labor camps 
and uh, the commandant decided of the camp to have a doorman be somebody, a kid. Mm -hmm. So he picked me and uh, I was to open the door and, of the camp and greet. And I had a booth, mm -hmm. you know, a little booth where I stayed in case it rained. Yeah. And there was a Wehrmacht, not the SS, some of the, this guy, some of the soldiers. And this Wehrmacht guy insisted that I learn math because he says, the war is going to be over. You're, going to, you're not going to be able to go to school. And he didn't believe anything that I told him that I said about people being killed. He said, the German people would never do that. Don't be silly. Don't listen to that. And he insisted that I work on math. And he would check me. Every time I came to the gate, he was in charge. Mm -hmm. Seven times seven. Six times six, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and again, you have an individual Taking the yeah. initiative. You told me a story once uh, about the fact that you were on some kind of a death march. Did what? Kind of on a death, you were on a death march? Yeah, yeah. Where was that exactly, do you remember? That was from that camp. From that camp. And that um, you were at the brink of falling down. Can you tell that story about what happened? Because no, everybody thinks of Nazis as all being terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and this is no, a wonderful the, story. You know, I told my son when he was 11 or 12 years old, mm -hmm. and when he went to school and they found out that his father was in a camp, and they asked him, what did he tell you? He told this story because I wanted him to know human beings. I did. Okay, but tell the story to the So the story was that the death march, it was winter. You know, he had some clothes and wooden shoes, but you know, and so there was a motorbike outfit who kept constantly running back and forth. And they saw anybody wiggling or shaking or not being able to make it, they killed him. You had to be, you had to be able to go to march. And, um, this soldier came with his gun, put it under my arm, and carried me. And when he saw the motorbike guys coming, he said to me, now listen, I have to leave now, but you stand straight and walk like you're very strong, and I'll come back. But don't wiggle, don't move, don't, you know. And so the motorbike guys went by, I was fine. He came back, put his gun under my arm, and he carried me again, which is why... So, so this almost goes again, you think of every Nazi as being yeah, heartless. Yeah, uh, no, but that's why, for example, I, I, uh, I did the Kafka thing, mm -hmm. because that's what the guy said, I hate humanity, but not individual. As humanity. individuals, humans can do extraordinary uh, yeah, things. Of course, of course. And uh, even now, what is ridiculous is this terrible, terrible thing, you know, saying never again, another lie. What the fuck do you mean never again? What's happening to the Rohingya? What's happening to people in Syria? What are you talking about? And so are you going to believe never again? No. What you have to believe is keep your eyes open and see that humanity is horrible and that only individuals are great so that you know that they're capable of doing terrible things and not never again because that won't ever happen. You told me another story yeah. um, and, and this one was, I don't know, you were getting off at some camp, I don't know which one it was, you probably know, and they were starting to shoot at people as you got off the off the cattle yeah, yeah. car. It was the last camp, and, you know, and and that was Bergen Belsen, I yeah. guess. And and in this particular case, again, you managed to avoid I dying didn't know I in was the avoiding. camps. I was just doing so what I what to, uh, recount that story a little bit. For well, us. we were packed into a, a, a cattle car, mm -hmm. and we were given a ration, some bread, and all that. And the guy behind me, Jew, 
was trying to get my ration and was trying to kill me, was trying to choke me. And so I went, bit his thigh and screamed. And then he knew to leave me alone, okay? Mm -hmm. And then we arrive in Belz and the door is open. They tell us to get out and machine guns are going. And I got flat on the ground because I felt if you shoot, you have to be flat. And I crawled to a truck, okay, which was parked, I felt. I get on this truck. I climbed up on the truck. Imagine, I was then 14 mm -hmm. and, you know, not in the, <laughs> pretty hungry. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. And climbed up on the truck because people were lying down there only to realize they were all dead. And then the truck starts off. You're in a truck full of dead top, people. On top of the truck. And they're all dead. They loaded them up. They shot them and then they loaded them up there. And I'm, I thought they were just lying down like I was. Yeah. And I'm on top of them. You're and on top of the bodies. Oh my God. And now the truck arrives at a huge fire pit where obviously they're going to throw the bodies into the fire pit. I guess what I did. What? <laughs> I guess. I jump off the truck. I open the door to the driver's side and I say, let's go, we gotta unload these bodies. Wow, you, you really, <laughs> you're a survivor, Jack. <laughs> I, mean, I mean. Well, you know, Clorman, Harold Clorman asked me, yeah. Jack, I just wanna know one thing. How do you survive a concentration camp? I said, I cannot tell you how you survive, but I can tell you how you don't survive. He said, how is that? If you feel sorry for yourself, wow. then you don't make it. Let me, this is a question that's been, when I was knowing that I was gonna interview you, uh, which I, I always kind of, sometimes I don't like to interview people I know really well because it's very difficult in a lot of ways. But there were quest there was one question and it was a burning question that, uh, that I have because of my, my involvement with comedy and so on. Was there anything in, the, in your life in the camps where people laughed about something? Oh, sure. I mean, there was humor, wasn't well, not there? Not just humor, but dancing and singing. For example, I learned a, a, a song, a Hasidic song from the Hungarian Jews, which to this day, um, uh, I, I, you know, I, I sing it, and uh, it goes like this. Oi, ihr Rebel, ich stehe in Zitter, in mein Herzl brennt a fire. Yach, well, sein a chusel la gitter, a chusel a gitter. Oh, Rabbi. In my heart burns a fire. I just want to tell you, I'm going to be loyal and true to you in the religion, you know. And so, so in other words, in, in the concentration camps, which we think of as the most dour of circumstances. Yeah. All right. There was dancing. There was singing. There was laughing. Yeah. Because uh, 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 you, it, it just nobody ever asked that question, and it's never portrayed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's also the guy that heard that I, uh, he's, he's an Italian composer. Yeah. And uh, he's done, de devoted to try to find out the songs from the camps. Mm -hmm. And he converted to Judaism after mm -hmm. he heard a lot of the songs. Someone said to him, there's this guy, he was a kid and he remembers a song that one of the kids wrote in the camps. The guy came to Paris. When he heard the song next time, he brought a crew and they filmed me singing the song. And it's now on a DVD in Italy, but now everywhere else they're selling it. So the song there, now this was a fascinating story. Yeah. So the Germans, what happened was the civilians, we walked through the towns to go to work. The German people are very upset. They saw kids going to work with shovels and picks, and their old kids wanted to have answers. So they complained 
about that to the command. And so they decided they had to find a way to get mm -hmm. rid of the kids. Mm -hmm. So guess what? What? They announced, because we knew what was going on at that point. Mm -hmm. There was no kidding around about, you know. So they said that the British decided to exchange German prisoners for Jewish kids in the camps. And we had to, if you wanted to, you volunteer for it. Most of the kids volunteered from all the camps around. Mm -hmm. And it was all in my camp in Merzbachtal, right? Mm -hmm. And I too felt I joined them, you know. And now they gave us wonderful food, dressed us in nice, good clothes, because, you know, the British should see it. So we believed absolutely that it's going to happen. Yeah. But then the day that we were lined up in mm -hmm. the square, what happened was soldiers showed up with guns, surrounded us. We thought, well, maybe they have to march us through the town. They want to, you know. But then an ambulance showed up with three sick people. Now we knew, whoa, we were 612 kids. And we knew ambulance, sick people are going to be exchanged for me. And so the Germans, if, you, if 612 had to go, it couldn't be 613 or 611. So they decided to exchange three kids for the three sick people. And I was with my cousin in the group, but they, I was also, that's the camp where I was the doorman, mm -hmm. you know. So now the kids knew they were selecting three to take out. They all raised their hands yelling, me, me. I thought, well, all right, go back to Auschwitz, I'll see my dad again. I mean, that was my thought. But then at the, they picked out two. At the last minute, I raised my hand and they noticed me. And they, they said, okay, picked me out. My cousin, the rest, one of the last transports taken to Auschwitz. Yeah, wow. Ah, these are some these are some amazing stories, Jack. Yeah. You know, you 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 survived a lot. Um, yeah, but it's getting know. tough now. How does it? How's it getting tough? What? How's it getting tough? It's a. I I managed somehow up to now. To. To suppress the reality, like, like even on Passover. I was thinking about the Egyptians and the Jews were liberated and happy Passover, as you see. This year it was impossible. You didn't have a Passover yes. that year. My son had a Passover Seder, the whole family and kids there. I said to Natalia, I don't think I want to go this time. She said, no, come on, you got you to gotta go. I went. I Let me broke, ask you this, though. I broke down. Y years have passed. You've gone on, as maybe in another interview, if we get to do another one with you, if you'll grace us with another interview yeah, at some time. If you grace us with another interview at some time, we can get into your history as a director, as a writer, as, a, as an artist, uh, uh, and, and all the famous people that you mentored and, and so on. Uh, and that's an important, very important part of your life. But this part of your life happened before that, and then you had this other period. And now as you get older, it's bothering you more yeah. than it bothered you, say, when you were in your 30s or when you were in your 40s uh, or I, 50s. Why is I, that? Well, two things. Once, first, the conditioning when you're a kid. Yeah. You don't try to understand what's happening and why it's happening. Mm -hmm. You accept this is what it's supposed to be, it's life. Yeah. And also you have no ability to understand it. You only know this is what I'm supposed to do. You can't grasp. You haven't got the words or the ways to explain. That's why you, when you're a kid, you cry mama or papa or whatever, but you don't grasp the things. And so, 
in a sense, that's what made me pull through in a way that I completely, for example, I had trouble with my marriages too, because uh, I, there was no way I could believe in love. You, you had trouble, you told me, with your mother from the fact that she said, I never loved you, I never wanted you, yeah, and yeah. you went through your entire life believing she did Not my did. entire life, up to, well, up to a certain point, but that was more recently. No, no. When did, you, was, when did you suddenly realize that she in fact after, had saved your life and didn't hate you? After my divorce from my first wife. I uh, I went to an analyst, okay, the first time I went to an analyst, and I need one now. <laughs> and, uh, and when I, and what happened was that uh, uh, after uh, I was there for, I went for five days a week for two years. And uh, at the end, I was leaving, back, going back to New York. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, so, Mr. Garfine, what have you gotten out of this analysis? I said, well, what I've gotten, the war is over. You, don't, you know, people are all kind. You can have a life. I have two kids. He said, yeah, but Mr. Garfine, what about love and woman? I mean, after all, you came here because your marriage broke up. So, what, what, do you, what have you learned? I said, well, uh, let me think about it. <laughs> so, two weeks later, I said, well, I know you want me to articulate it, but I can't, you have to help me. So he said, well, one thing, Mr. Garfield, you were 13 years old. Your sister was 10. You couldn't save her. You were not responsible. You couldn't save her. Stop being attracted to women you want to save. Flabbergasted. <laughs> because my first wife was married to a gangster, you know, and she was a chorus. Your first wife was the actress Carol Baker. Yeah, yeah. We she was mention. an actress first in a chorus line, and you know. Mm -hmm. And then she married, this guy was a gangster. She was 19, he was in his 60s. You know, so. And so you felt you were saving her. And I did save but her. But coming to terms with your mother. So wait, so then he said, he said, and uh, what happened, Jack? He said, what about, um, your mother, he said, me, what happened was that I said, uh, I mean, to be very clear about this. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So about three years ago, four years ago, mm -hmm. the film forum gave me a tribute here mm -hmm. for my film work. Mm -hmm. And in the audience was a friend of mine, Jack, who became a famous analyst in New York. And, uh, and I only met him before that, a few years before. But he went through the camps, right? Mm -hmm. And he came to the theater. And I told the story I just told you. Yeah. And uh, that people asked me, what Auschwitz, what happened? And I told about, my, yeah, right. about the analyst and the sister. During the break, in the film, between two films, Jack came over to me and said, well, that analyst was on the right track, Jack, but he didn't get it right. I said, what are you talking about? It wasn't your sister, Jack, it was your mother. Okay, Jack, if you don't want to talk about it. It's because you couldn't save her. And that must have been the reason because look at what you're doing now. You know, look at how you're reacting to it. Let's get. And look, I even when I talk about it like that, I realize 
That's what it was. Wow. What? And that's when I realized fully, although I had good friends like Sean O'Casey, the playwright, a great playwright. I was doing Shadow of a Gunman on Broadway without ever talking to him about my life or anything. He sensed in me that it had something to do with my mother, but it was never this definite like what Jack did. But now you say that you are more kind of depressed than you have been. About, uh, you're more depressed than you have been about those days in the camps. And, and that, it's kind camps. of interesting that, that there was this period of your life where, hey, you had life and you did it, and now it's at the very, towards the end of your life. Yeah, yeah. God willing, you'll live to be a thousand, but you know, yeah. as you've gotten older, you're 87 now, all of a sudden, uh, you're, you're like, these things really bother you. Yeah. You know, let me, let me. It's not bother, let, let, it's. Yeah. You see the reality. Yeah. Let me. Let me. You refuse to see. Before. Let's let's finish this thing off by a remembrance of the day you got liberated. Oh, what? The day you were liberated. Yeah. The day the camps got liberated. Yeah. Do you do you remember that? It's coming that? up now. It's coming up. April fifteenth. April fifteenth is Liberation Day, yeah. or the day, or somebody said your birthday. My kids. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Liberation Day. Uh, it's also tax day too. But <laughs> um, what what do you remember about that day of liberation? What? what do you remember about that day of liberation? Did you believe it when it was happening, or did you? Uh, the, it was like three days before that we knew the British were coming close, and yeah. I knew I only had three days to live. I somehow knew I had enough energy to last three days, and after that I couldn't, I wouldn't have enough. Energy. You were that weak. What? You were that weak. Yeah, yeah I weighed yeah. 48 pounds, oh, wow. 23 kilos, you know. I couldn't move anymore. And uh, I couldn't walk, I couldn't move. And defecated in place, you know. And, uh, and then the British came on the second day and came over to me and it, because they were now going to disinfect people. They set up a place to disinfect you and give you a new set of clothes and that. And they took me to the disinfecting room and they asked me to take my clothes off. And I said, no, no, I'm not giving up my clothes. No. And my hair was up like this with gook yeah. stuff. Yeah. And so they called a British officer who spoke Yiddish. And he came to me and he said, Listen, I guarantee you, you go to the disinfecting room, I will bring your clothes back, and I will have them done, and you will have your clothes. And then I noticed he turned away and cried. That's what made me believe him. Mm -hmm. And look at the difference between America and the British, because when I came here, you know, my family put me in a foster home, you know. They didn't want to keep me, I was saying. And, uh, and once I start, got a scholarship from Piscata in a dramatic workshop, where Rod Steiger, Walter Matthau, uh, they were my classmates, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, and so, um, I forgot. Well, let, let, we, we, so it's Liberation Day, and you're finally liberated. And they sent you to a hospital in Sweden, did you say? No, that was later. But let me yeah. finish the story, okay. because it's important. So, uh, when I got into that school, they arranged for the foster home to move me to Central Park West. Before that, I was in Queens. At the, to a doctor's place, and they were very nice. She was very nice, the woman to me, took care of me. But at 18, I had to leave. I was on my own. Mm -hmm. So I was packing. I didn't see my clothes from Belgium. I said to the woman, what happened? I had my clothes in Belgium. 
Oh, Jack, I didn't want you to have that, to see that, so I threw it in the garbage. Now, here was a difference which this day exists in America. Yeah. Forget the past, don't deal with it. Right. And so it was, I hated that woman after that, <laughs> but then I realized she was simply the consequence of a Hollywood philosophy. Happy ending, don't think about it, okay? And uh, so that's, a, you could see the contrast. What did you want to know? No, you, you went to a hospital then, in yeah. Sweden or something where... Oh yeah, you they put me in a room by myself. Yeah. And I thought... Uh, the reason why Sweden is because a lot of different... No, no, not Sweden. Not Sweden. First in Belgium, they put me yeah. in a hospital room by myself. Yeah. And what happened was, there was a car, a little entryway, yeah. and the doctors were there. Mm -hmm. And they spoke uh, German, even though someone... Uh, and they said to the nurse, it's not going to last long, so oh, just be nice to the, yeah. all that. And I felt furious. I said, what the hell are they, what? I went through the war, all that, and they t now I understood why they gave me a room to myself, you know. I said, they, I said to myself, oh, bad sons of bitches, how dare they put me on like that, right? I didn't say anything, I couldn't say anything. And then the British did something. They put Bergen Belsen on fire, and they wanted us to see it going up in flames. There would be a cure. And it was, you know, uh, summer, spring. So they opened the windows and they moved your bed so you could see the fire. And suddenly I see a reflection of myself in the window. I said, oh my God, they're right. <laughs> this guy is going to last. <laughs> Yeah. I never saw myself like this. You were like I, down to 48. I saw myself in You were down to 48 pounds, basically? Yeah. Wow. wow. So anyway. I, but you went to another hospital then, too. No, from there, yeah. the Swedes yes. okay. took all the children. They took us to Sweden. Right. And there, too, it was an amazing experience. Because Nurse Hedvig would not go home. She'd stay all night in the hospital to be next to me in case I needed anything. Again, another individual human being. Uh, I'd like to end this thing. Uh, it, it, you know, there's a camera right there if you look directly at it. Which and camera? It, right there. That, see that little thing up there? It's very small. This? Yeah, that right up there. I just want you to look at it and tell people something they should know about what you experienced. The most important thing they should know. The most important thing that they should know from what you've experienced. Just look right into the camera and tell them. Well, you have to know that life is cruel. And that's why the Jews, when they drink, they, even though they don't understand it, they say l'chaim to life, mm -hmm. but it's not dancing and singing Hollywood style. It's like saying, I take you on. I take you on. Go ahead, be, do what you want. Here, I drink to you. And I would say that it's not even anything you think of consciously. You just know that, that you don't let the cruelty get you down. And this has been, you know, spectacular. This has been just, uh, I, I, I think it's an important story people needed to hear. And uh, there's more to your life. This is just the beginning of it. The rest of your life is phenomenal. <laughs> and the things that you did and the people you knew and the places you've been. And I hope that some other time you can come back here and we can do that part of the story. Sure, because sure. that's the happier part. <laughs> Maybe not the marriages, but the, the, yeah. the, the rest well, of Well, at the time I thought the marriages because yeah. in a sense I was totally screwed up about love. So. We'll get into that. Thank you so much, Jack. You're very well. Jack Garfine. Okay.
Okay, that's our interview with Jack Garfine. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I thought we would get more people watching it than were watching it uh, because it is such a phenomenal story. And But I guess, you know, I went to see how many people were listening to it and not a lot. Uh, I think we're very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We're very uh, uh, um, uncaring of the past. And... Um, I don't know. I don't. I you know. I, I, I at one point here, I was getting kind of mad when I was seeing. I thought there'd be a lot more people listening to it, uh, and I'm saying to myself, well, maybe they think, oh, well, you know, he'll post it afterwards, and I can go watch it then. Well, maybe they said that, and maybe they didn't. I don't know if I'm going to post this thing. I I think that uh, you know the people who saw it saw it. The people who heard it heard it. It is a gift from me to you, and uh, it only made more precious by the fact that you won't be able to hear it anywhere else. Um, that being said, I don't, I don't know. Come midnight, I may have a change of heart. I do know that if you want to see the full interview in its entirety, the video, uh, you simply, if you have a Roku, can go to Gabnet TV, Gabnet TV. Uh, uh, subscribe to that channel uh, and put the, put it on your Roku and when you go there there is the whole interview on Gabnet TV in its entirety no other part of the show or whatever just the interview from beginning to end uh, and there were some breaks that we took and uh, those are are you are very obvious when you watch it but uh, as to whether I'm even going to post this show tonight, I have, I have no idea. Right now I'm so pissed off, I, I don't want to, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I don't know. But anyway, uh, it's time to go to our citizens panel, which is always very interesting if anybody calls, because, uh, again, uh, tonight we went a long time without going to, the, uh, to, the, um, uh, to Skype. So we'll just see if anybody's interested in talking either about the interview or anything else, you know. Um, let me see here. There we go. I want to see here. Uh, recent things. Let me get rid of those. Um, and uh, I have to... Um, I have a lot of work to do here whenever I do this show, especially when I, since I'm doing the video. And I try to do it so transparently that it's not a, a major problem. Anyway, the lines are open. The Skype lines are open. And we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and um, uh, if you don't know how to get a hold of us, the best way to do it is to uh, go over to gabnet.net. And over on the right-hand side of the page is a whole tutorial about how you can become part of the Citizens Panel and how you can call and, uh, and, and uh, talk to us. <laughs> Well, let's see here. Ah, okay. Uh, our first caller up this evening is Jeff Stein. Hello, Jeff. How are you? I am fine. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, did you hear the interview? Uh, wait a minute. Your mic is is turned off for some reason. Is, is there a reason for that? Huh. What? No, can't hear you. Bingo. Okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. You were as you were going to say. I saw it. I, I watched it tonight, and um, I wasn't able to get it on at the beginning. Yeah. And sometimes it takes uh, a few minutes. Yeah. So, uh, but I listened to most of it. Yeah. Uh, in spite of it, and and it was quite dramatic, of course. Yeah. As you saw, and. Um, I don't know. It's very emotional stuff. Just, just to listen to it. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. And and uh, but it, you, you hear some things that you know. The question I always wanted to ask, and I got a chance to ask it, was, did you ever laugh? You know. And, and he said, yes, we laughed and we sang, and we did all kinds of things like that. You know. And I, that's the kind of thing that you didn't think went on in the in the concentration camps. Uh, but I wanted to know because I I, I couldn't imagine. You going that into that kind of situation without even having something like you know gallows humor about the whole thing, uh, you know, with the whistling in the dark that we all have a tendency to do, uh, and uh, so that was that was a question I, I always wanted to ask. Uh, Tony, did you get to hear it at all? 
Yeah, I heard the last 30 minutes. I mean, he was down to 47 pounds. That's sad. I mean. Yeah, well, it weighs considerably more. Now, he's a short guy to begin with. Um, you know, I was thinking about what you said. I mean, I don't, that's like, I don't even know how they were able to just just even stay focused on anything. I mean, just to know everybody was dying around that. I mean, you can't even fathom it, really. Yeah. You know, people like, just total bloodlines gone. It's, I don't know, you know? Yeah. I would have just lost my mind, I think. They, that's what I'm saying. You know, that's why it's probably so hard for him to talk. I don't think I'd ever be able to talk about that again. Well, um, you know, it, it, I, I caught him at a very rough time of the year for that because it was Passover that he got, he got arrested, and it was the 15th of April that he got deliberated. And both of those now, as he's gotten older, become very bad times of the year for him. I would imagine he got to be so depressed on certain times. You well, know you, you would think that as the years have gone on and his life has turned out to be very good, okay, uh, that um, he would not be as depressed over that. Uh, that that he would have some kind of oh I don't know uh, distant survivor's vision. guilt. Like, well, right no, no, no. I don't think it's a survivor's guilt. Naked. You know, uh, it, believe me, he has no no reason to feel guilty that he survived. But I mean, you know, I wonder if, you know, if I would feel like that. Like if I knew so many of my friends are gone. Well, I think the, like, the why the, me? You know, I, I I don't know if he said it in the interview, but I've said to him in the past, why was Liberation Day a bad day for you? And he said because I found out who was gone. You know, I didn't. I didn't know where my that my mother was dead. Right. I didn't I know my sister was dead or my father was dead. What's also interesting is that he got to see his father one more time. Yeah, I mean that's so remarkable. Right? You, you know, I can't remember which camp. I think he said Auschwitz is where he met up with him. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a great interview. It's just said I was actually you know I was crying because how can you not? It's like you know you yeah. miss people when they're gone normally. Yeah. But to totally have everything gone for you, it's got to be like, I don't even know, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a hard thing to live with. I mean, he's a very brave man, I have to say that. Well, I don't know. I don't know if bravery is the term you use. Uh, you know, you have no choice in the matter. I don't know if I'd be able to move on, Alex. I don't know. Well, a lot I think of, I'd go into a shell like. Well, a, a lot of people, we've had a lot of survivors of, of the concentration camps who have gone on and had very decent lives and if, feel that living a good life is a testament to those who went before. Yes, Jeff. Well, the ones that I, I know, I know there's only two people and, uh, who are survivors. There aren't, and, there aren't many of them left, let's mention. No, they're not, they're not here anymore. They're, they're all since at this point. Yeah. But... Uh, they were. Um, they didn't really want to talk about it. Yeah. It was not for uh, common discussions. Let's put it that way. They, they didn't want to talk about it. That's yeah. All I, was I think. Um, um, I, I don't know. I, I. I. I only got to know Jack in the last year or so, and and so I don't know what how he was about this subject back in the day. But now he's, you know, he's 87 years old, and you get to think, hey, it's, you know, it's, there are less days left than there were before me, and, and uh, I got to get all the stuff off my chest, you know, so that, that could be too. Uh, uh, Phil? Yeah. Thoughts? Uh, you know, I, I, have a, I have a very close friend whose father was a survivor of the camps. Uh, he was in two camps, and uh, he... Um, by the way, uh, Jack was in 11 total. Uh, well, if you got money, you can travel. Yeah. But uh, the, uh, the, the thing is, uh, it was a very similar experience. Uh, my friend's dad is still alive. He's about the same age as Jack. And uh, he didn't really talk about it either. It's actually harder for my very close friend, who is the son of the survivor, to talk about it than it is for his... Uh, uh, for his father and his mother was also in camps mm -hmm. uh, and they met when they were liberated in Sweden. Yeah, you told us this the other night. Yeah. Well, it was a long time ago, but uh, anyway, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing what people, what people can do to people. You know, when he said that he climbed up on that truck and it was f uh, full of dead bodies and, and, and that's, you know, one way he survived. But this, this life was probably normal 
for for him at that time. You know, that was what reality was. That's what normalcy was. Uh, I don't know if they were thinking about surviving. They just they just lived. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, to to hear uh, another survivor uh, tell the story, and the story is always so similar to uh, to my friend's dad's story, and. My friend's dad's story was documented. Uh, Spielberg had a project. Uh, now, was Jack uh, interviewed for that project? Uh, I think Jack doesn't want anything to do with it. Uh. He thinks that Spielberg trivialized the Holocaust. Well, th- this this was totally. It At least not, I'm not. I don't want to speak for Jack, but that's kind of what he's implied to me. Although, if if you were to listen to the interview. It wasn't done by Spielberg. It was done by. Well, I know, I know. It's the Shoah project, right? And uh, all of a sudden, it was when, when all of a sudden, uh, one day, uh, Spielberg realized he was Jewish, you know, and 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 uh, I guess because it had dramatic uh, purposes, you know. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not so sure because a lot of the these interviews. Never saw the light of day. No, what I'm they saying were, is the interviews were done for the Shoah Project, which Spielberg started after doing uh, Schindler's List, so that uh-huh. these stories could be memorialized. And, right. And, and that's a very good idea. Uh, yes. But, you know, um, uh, I, Spielberg is a, is a Hollywood uh, product, and everything to him kind of has a product to it. Yeah, but you know. who else did it? Hmm? Nobody. Nobody uh, other than this. I think there were other people doing that, getting Holocaust survivors to tell stories. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't you ever heard of the Holocaust Museum? Uh, No, they they, uh, didn't exist. uh, Well, no, they did exist at that time. And uh, there were people who were more, were were having. Don't you read the papers? Huh? Don't you read the papers? Uh, uh, Don't uh, our enemies say that there was never a Holocaust? Those are the fucking nut jobs, really. Yeah, yeah. they all they happen to be right wingers who voted for Trump, <laughs> like Iranians. Yeah, uh, Iranians. Yeah, yeah. They they say yeah. that they uh, there was no Holocaust. Uh, How can you even say I, that these psychos? Uh, you know, they, they say it because they hate. And, and no, I don't you know, know that I've heard the Iranians yep. as a matter of uh, of um, course uh, saying that there was no Holocaust. Yes. Uh, you know, I think that there have been some. Some Germans who've done that. There have been white supremacists in America who say that. Well, the Iranians uh, say it, and they say it because they call for the destruction of Israel oh, and the Jews. Oh, God, here but, we go again. But, uh, what, go again. Uh, and let's all get along. Yeah. Yeah. Let's all get along. <laughs> but Jack said, you know, when he was talking about. Hey, listen, Denver, listen, you can, listen. Just hold on, because knowing Trump any day now, he's going to say how great the Ayatollah is as a person. Okay, yeah. because he just did it for Kim Jong Un and said he's just. This is a guy he called Rocket Boy. Okay, Trumpers wouldn't give him a killer. No matter no, what. He no, did. but why all of a sudden? He secondly, everybody's pissed about him saying what a wonderful person Kim Jong Un is because he's responsible for the deaths of countless numbers of people in his country. And yet, he, and yet, Trump is now uh he's saying negotiate. oh he's a great guy you know he's, I mean, he's an honorable he person it's he he fucking nuts phil i don't care what you say the guy is crazy he loves himself it's all vanity that's it so anyway the the idea is jack said uh, that he didn't support this never again because uh jack, tony will you yeah shut up tony oh i'm sorry so mm-hmm. anyway when it when it comes to this let the moron again, speak he said, you know, in Rwanda and, uh, you know, and, and other countries that uh, it was happening again and, and that humanity and, and mankind was allowing this to happen. And, and, and it shouldn't. Uh, I, I agree that uh, you can't let this happen in other countries, no matter whether they're Jews or not. But you really have to support never again. Uh, not only for the Jews, but for those well, other I, people. I support it, here. but I also support it uh, by saying that it would be nice if Israel lived up to that. Oh, all they want to do is live in peace. Well, and th- th- for years peace. they've been jailing Arabs in Israel. They've been yeah. they've had their own little form of concentration camps and, going and on in Israel. Years, if you if you read the Hitler's Mufti, 
for years since the 1920s. Oh, don't, uh, give me, don't give me all this bullshit. Tax. Don't give me this Chaim Yankel bullshit. It has been okay? a tax. Uh, and, and so oh, these yeah. Arabs are going and they're stabbing. Oh, and yeah, oh, they're they, stabbing. Well, yeah, they're the ones stabbing in London, I think. Yeah, what they? about yeah. the buses yeah. and, and the school children yeah. that have been killed in Israel over the last 20, 30 years? They blow up buses. You, you couldn't even get on a bus. Uh, you, you know how many burned out buses? Have you tried to get on a subway in New York? And department stores, uh, the Arabs have blown up in Israel. You know, you forget. You got selective memory when it comes to this. Uh, these people are at war with the Israelis. And you discount the Israelis for protecting themselves. How could you? Hmm? Let's see. Uh, somebody just wrote here. Who was it? I don't know who it is. Zorab36 said, stop. Being stupid, Phil. <laughs> well, I, Zorad just showed me how ignorant he really is. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> well, I'm just reading what somebody wrote here. Just because he wrote it doesn't mean it's true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, so anyway, uh, the uh, the uh, the Iranians will be great. Uh, the leaders of, of, uh, of uh, Iran will be great people very soon in the eyes of Donald Trump as soon as they say something nice about it. Thanks for putting those words in his mouth. Well, I'm putting the word, not putting the words in his mouth about what he said about Kim Jong-un just the other day. Kim Jong-un comes to the table and, and, and joins the world of civilized people. But all of a sudden, this is in a matter of a couple of weeks that he's suddenly an honorable human being who can be trusted? So you you want him to negotiate with somebody? No, he, but I don't think I don't think you call wonderful a person who's responsible for the deaths of hundreds upon hundreds of his own people at his no, hand. No, what he has up his sleeve. No, uh, all I'm saying. Do you think that a person? You uh, uh, do you think that a person like Kim Jong Un, who we know ki killed his uncle by uh, literally obliterating him by shooting him with a cannon? Mm -hmm. Okay, oh uh, that's just a good example. And the hundreds of other people that have died as a result of being against, hold on a second, against his regime should in any way by the President of the United States be called an honorable person. Look, if, if they, we don't, don't try to excuse it, Phil, why don't you say that for once Trump's full of shit? I don't think so, because if we don't arrive at peace with this madman. Well, how about Ar Iran? We should do the same thing with Iran. Iran wants to build an atomic bomb. Oh, they can't. They can't. They aren't building an atomic bomb. They are. They've stopped building atomic bombs, and the only way they're going to start again is if we get rid of that treaty, because then they have no treaty to abide by. Well, they got a treaty with everybody else except the United States. Well, it, it, it'll 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 go to hell if the United States isn't part of it. Doesn't have to be part of it. The logic on the part of Trump is really stupid. I think m m uh, the uh, French prime minister today <laughs> said it best that, you know, we have to take the treaty we currently have and just add to it if you're unhappy with uh, that there isn't enough bite in it. Okay. You say that they're not going to add to it. They said, hey, they signed the treaty. That's it. That's the deal. Well, you know, all I'm saying is uh, it would be a, a big miscalculation on our part to pull out of that because what we want to do is at least we've got some assurances of on-site inspections and things All like that. All we've got is kicking yes, the can Yes, yes, Renee. Road. Well, yeah, and he's kicking the can <laughs> up the road with Kim Jong-un, who we're going to be sold out to. Anyway, Renee. So did anybody watch uh, Macron's speech? No. Uh, okay. it, uh, to the Congress? Yeah. So uh, I looked at CNN, and CNN talked about it, like, briefly, but then they talked about Melania's big night and what Melania was wearing and Melania and the First Lady of France, blah, 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 blah. I go over to BBC.com, and they pointed out every part of Macron's speech that trumped over Trump. He was mouthing off to Trump big time, and we didn't put anything on CNN. But if you go over to BBC.com, and then you can watch it all or watch portions of it where he danced on top of Trump's bullshit. And it was interesting to see that CNN is kowtowing to, I don't know who CNN or what CNN is thinking. I haven't been into any other websites. But once I saw the BBC website where they were covering his speech and not Melania's outfit, I, I can say we're missing the point. 
they covered Ivanka's outfit too. No, they covered Ivanka's outfit and they covered the first lady's outfit. Both first ladies. And she was inappropriately dressed yet again, if we're going to talk fashion. How was she inappropriately dressed? She was see through for a state function. (gasps) What a pig. Was she wearing Uh, underwear? It, no, the top of her dress was see-through and the bottom of her dress was see-through. She was standing next to, was she, I don't care who she was standing next to, but in the same exact shot was uh, Mrs. Mark Cron uh, wearing a Chanel as well. And that Chanel was appropriate oh. for the she event. Is in her 60s, right? I said appropriate for the event, not appropriate for age. Okay. She's not wearing trans things that you can see through at a state dinner i couldn't see through it i could see through it don't somebody tell like don't wear it it's just no it's just funny that that cnn only talked about the bullshit and then when you get over to bbc they talked about how macron handed trump his ass on multiple occasions so are you dissing cnn now i'm not happy with it did we ever say we like? Wait a minute. Did we did we ever say we like CNN? No, not really. No. But but having said that, it's the first news source I go to. But then I go to another one after that, and another one after that. Do you ever do you ever watch Do you ever watch Fox? Do you ever go over to Fox just to see how they're parsing the words on uh, on a news story? Because I do. I want. I don't. To, I, don't. I like. I don't to, have that. Why do you give them that much time? Well, no. Because, I feel well because I like being in Bizarro Land. You know. I see, if you look at the statistics on how much, how many times, how often CNN is correct in what they say or in what they broadcast, mm-hmm. it's very low. So if you think about how much time of your life you want to spend getting news from a shitty source that's incorrect, then watch CNN. If you want to spend your real life talking to real, looking at real news and reading real news, you kind of have to raise the bar. Real news, according to Renee. No, honey, real news according to the world. Because BBC is just a shitty example, right? See, different news sources give you different stories. Uh, just like you said, CNN was giving you a story about dresses, mm-hmm. and BBC was giving you what you felt was the, was the real deal. Uh, Fox gives you news okay. stories that those ones don't no, run. No. As much as I like apparel... Okay. Mm. I don't give a sh- I, it, it's one of the Patrick things. We it's nothing to, that we should be discussing when there's something important to discuss. I mean, I'm a Chanel freak. I would love to have my entire closet look like something out of out of uh that movie about uh anyway. I, I would love to have a huge closet the size Not of my even house. Hawaii, you better learn to like Tommy Bahama. Yeah, well, they're getting a lot of my money. But the issue is is that it's not something you should be talking it, it isn't in, it's not news talking about Chanel instead of talking about the importance of what was happening at the state dinner. Well, but you, but, but you see this is the problem. Look, this is the problem I have with all these news outfits. Okay? Uh, I have the same problem with MSNBC too. I mean, it's that they know that it's it, it, they know they're playing to a certain audience and they want to keep that audience happy. Rather than tell you what you need to know, they tell you what they think you want to hear. And I, you know, that goes for Fox and that goes for MSNBC and that goes for CNN, who's taking an adversarial position. Are you there, uh, 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 Charlene? Sorry, Alex. Yeah, I'm there. Oh, uh, were you nodding out there? Oh, oh, Ted, I'm sorry. You were holding I'm your sorry. phone and you were going, eh, eh. I thought we were getting Wait, which, which hand was your hurt, the surgery hand? Oh, this one. How's it doing? Well, the, the wrist part is okay, but the, the ring finger part, it's kind of lumpy. And he said I should, like, massage, you know. But I'm going to, like, an occupational hand therapist now. Okay, that's a good thing. Is there anybody that calls this program that doesn't have to go to Lourdes for crying out loud? I know. Yeah, I need Lourdes, right? (laughs) Gee, I mean, Lourdes will cure me. (laughs) Poor Kevin with his foot. Oh yeah, no, that's bad. Yeah, Yeah. that's serious. Yeah, that's serious stuff. On to a different subject. Sure. Can I say? Well, I don't know how you got to drag us off talking about Jack and into this ditch. 
Phil. How did I drag you off? Yes, yeah, you did. You suddenly did your Iranian, bitch. I hate the Iranians bit. Well, the Iranians hate, yeah. hate the Jews. We're, we weren't talking about that. We were talking about a man's life experience. And he, and he mentioned never again and the, and the things that are happening around the world today. And so it's a perfectly uh, pertinent... Because he maintains, and quite rightly so, I believe that uh, it, it, the human race is, is terrible. It's yes, individual. It well, hold on a second. Let me finish, Phil. Agreed uh, with it, 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 Yes, it, it, it's, it's, uh, the human race is terrible, but individuals are terrific. In other words, it's been his experience, especially in this scenario of, 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 the, of the camps, that humanity was terrible. But there were individual human beings who were wonderful and when it literally risked their lives to save other people. I mean, like that that soldier who held him up, you know, uh, and, and literally saved his life by doing that. And that's an individual. And that was a Nazi. We're not talking about, you know, some other person in the camp or, or, or some Polish soldiers. We're talking about a Nazi and he helped save his life. So, you know, I mean... Um, That's he, why you can't characterize <laughs> everybody by the affiliation that they have. Okay. Republicans. Uh, no. We, we, we can see in advance that the Republicans are taking us to hell. We don't need Listen, to Listen, I don't know that the Democrats, the Democrats don't have their ability to take us to hell, too. Oh, you, you know. know what? Like I keep saying Bill Clinton's issue is about to bite us in the face. Can't wait for that. Self-directed IRAs are about to hit us big time. I'm sorry, Charlene, you but, had something you were going to say. Yeah. Oh, well, this isn't important. It's just a Phil thing. But uh, I've been listening, and he keeps mentioning, first, he couldn't pronounce oxybutynin. Yeah. But women take oxybutynin, too. And for the same thing, because I got a doctor to give it to me, and uh, I don't have to take it so where, much where now. Where did that come you know, from? Huh? When did he Phil tell you? Was talk, it, Phil, is this the medication you were talking about that you can't get Kaiser yeah. Cog back? Yeah. Well, they gave me something else and it's working. Oh. oh, okay. Was it a generic that they gave you? I don't know. It, uh, it turns out I had it all, all along. What's it called? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's why they ignored you. <laughs> uh, it starts with an S. Uh, let, me, let me look at his note. I, I took one tonight. It's working. So, so Charlene, Charlene, do you like it? I think it's called Stop P, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, stop P, right. <laughs> Charlene, did you use it and you liked it? Well, it's bad for your kidneys and all this, but, I mean, I think it might have helped a little, but uh, there was other stuff that happened, and, you know, now I stopped taking it because I had a surgery, and it, I, had a, I had to, like, drain yeah. fluid. Okay, well, here like, we go I'm again. I'm taking that to hold the fluid in. Yeah. I better stop right. taking but, it. I think, I think it's called Sanctura, S-A-N-C-T-U-R-A. Oh, never, never heard, heard of that, that one. Uh, that's, that's what they gave me. Small, I can swallow it. It's okay. Sounds like well, the name of some exotic it, some exotic like, singer. You know, Sanctura yeah. Yeah. sings. Women take it as well. So it's like, uh, you know, anybody, male, female, you know. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Enough with the Sorry, enough with the medicine. Track. We had one, one more thing oh, for the waiting God. room. What? Uh, are uh, Charlene? Are you using your oh, CPAP? No. 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 No more. No more. Oh, okay. CPAP is important. Well, that's okay. Yeah, well, I got a new one. Oh. Uh, I gave up on it, and they hate me because I don't. Want well, to you know, you know something. Really I I snored a lot, and I don't snore anymore. So. With your You're CPAP machine? Weight? No. Uh, with with weight. losing fifty-five yeah. pounds. Yeah, that, that, that'll help. That, but some people who snore all the time, that isn't, losing weight isn't going to help them not snore. It's the throat structure. Right. Uh, okay, I have some more boring stuff that I won't mention about. But, but Alex, you know, you said you look good. I think you look really good. I don't think you lose, You know, need to lose that much more. Well, I, I actually, I gained three pounds. I gained a whole bunch of uh, some weight in the last couple of days. And then in one day I took off three pounds. And the way I did it was it turned out that the night that the time that I gained that weight, I had ribs. And I guess it, Chinese reta food. it, reta no, it retained water from, uh, the, from the salt. You and just, in one yeah, day I lost I, I lost three pounds, you know, I could do that. Yeah, yeah. I so, can see that. Uh, and we and, always have that discussion after we eat Chinese food. How do your wedding rings fit? Well, right. they don't. That's <laughs> inflammation from MSG. But that must be, Alex, why you're, you're good. Because one pound and you notice and everything. Well, I, I really I, I, no, if I had a job, I wouldn't have these things to get depressed about. I'd have some something to do to, to occupy my time. 
you know. Right, right. Jeff, are you bored in retirement? Sometimes. Okay. I'm bored. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, but all there's I'm, a lot of things I do. All I'm saying, I'm tired. I'm kind of tired of watching the news, to be honest with you. I, I just find it, I, I, it just, it's boring. It's just boring and it's tedious and it's, it's, uh, I, I, I really don't, it's getting to the point where I don't give a shit. I can't do anything about Trump. The only person that can do something about Trump is maybe the people that are going after him, like Mueller and so on. But, you know, uh, oh, gee, I left my tea in the other room. Hmm, okay. Yeah, Giuliani's going to go after Mueller. Yeah, I saw it. Giuliani join the ranks. That's so embarrassing. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, in a, any day now, they'll find out stuff about Giuliani. Giuliani. Yeah, yeah boy, if he's got some hookers and pee oh, tapes behind Alex, him, I'm pretty sure. Alex, yeah. um, uh, Giuliani's wife is leaving him. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Oh, Number Did three. your friend, uh, oh, no, that was the, the other guy, yeah. the cop guy. That hold hold on a second. Talk, talk to each other. I want to get my tea. All right, so Giuliani's wife was a cop. She was a uh, police captain, I but think. But who was he married to? She was on TV. Donna Hanover? The, yeah, Donna Hanover. I think that was the she second had. one, though. Yeah. Wait, how many wives has he had? He's got three. He even married his second cousin. I and think. then he married this oh. one, and now she's leaving him. I'm serious. This guy's crazy. The second cousin? Yeah. It's those Italians. <laughs> it's true. I mean, but it's I crazy. Heard, well, not yeah, my the cab driver in the 80s told me that he's half Jewish and half Italian. I think he married his second cousin. Oh. Yeah. Giuliani could be Jewish. Tony, you might be right about that. The cab driver told me that when I lived in New York that in combination. the 80s. I'm not so sure he is. You know, well, he could have been wrong. He was just a cab driver. What did he know? I found it. Because I wasn't sure. Um, I found my tea. It was, oh. uh, guess where it was? It was in the Keurig mm. machine. I had forgotten to get my tea. Did you turn off the oven or the or stove? The burner, oh, stove. Right? No, that has nothing to do with it. Okay. Well, we just don't want to hear Marjorie talking about it again. Right. <laughs> we don't want you to burn your house down. Well, you know what? Yeah, I've, we what I've done, what, I, what I've found is I, 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 I was having certain lapses of memory. Like I, when I went to Costco the other day, I checked out, and then I was leaving the place and suddenly realized I hadn't put all my groceries in the bag. So I had to go back and do that. I'm going, uh, why, why don't you have that has bags? Why? I, I, you, they, oh, yeah. Costco has the greatest shopping bags you can possibly buy. They never wear out. Oh, yeah. oh the ones that are fabric bags. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, so I, I go there and I they're not fabric. They're not, they're, not, they're not fabric, but they're made of something else. And they just yes. last forever. Right. They're fabric on the outside with an inside insulated area so that you can buy ice and put it in. No, the, no, that's in. not the one either. That's not the one? No, You're talking about one, the ones that fold one down? just with handles. Just yeah. it has handles. And, oh, it must be the fold down. Yeah, thing. and the thing is, I finally, when I throw them out, I throw them out because they start to smell because all the juice and everything that's gotten in there over the years. <laughs> but they last forever, those damn things, you know? Yeah, so does the salmonella. I, you know, some of those diseases... Are those airborne things? That's are what those, I've heard. Yeah, they don't, don't use those because of the salmonella. You know, you can't wash. But them. anyway, anyway, the, the point was that this happened to me, and I suddenly realized that maybe it was because I was taking Xanax every night to put me to sleep. So I stopped taking the Xanax, and the last two days, my memory has started getting better and better and better. You know, uh, have alert, you taken, yeah. uh, a semi-automatic rifle yet? No, no. So <laughs> Xanax is doing to you what sleeping aids do to women mm -hmm. and that is it stays in their system a lot longer than if you were another person yeah and that means that you're impaired for a longer period of time after you've taken it yeah so you now know that when you wake up in the morning were you only taking like how many pills were you taking at night uh i was just taking a, just a small like a quarter of a pill just and that a, stayed with you yeah apparently i mean it just got to the point where i was i was uh uh, not remembering things and, you know, feeling see, just like a, like I was a vegetable. That's so, good to know. That's yeah. good to so, know. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I'll take it every now and then, but not, not most of the time, not as much as I was. I'm trying to just, if I can't go to sleep, I don't go to sleep. Big deal, so, you know. Around for Waffle Houses? No, I don't go. You know, Phil. Did they find that guy? He brought yeah, they took him like two days. They got him. They found him. I was going to work. They did find him? Yeah. With his shirt off and his pants on, right? Yeah. 
And after 30 years, they they think they have found the what the the uh, California oh, ki- uh, oh yeah it was Golden, State, Golden State, killer. State killer yeah and he was a cop he got him he was a cop Auburn a cop there you go yeah you and, and what he got fired though well what what what, what, what was even even worse about it was that not worse about it but uh, Patton Oswald wife mm. before she died had finished a book on the subject and named this guy oh, wow. as wow. the golden state killer mm. and uh, today they guy. today they had Patton on television uh, saying you know bless you dear you know you 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 your police your your detective work was was accurate now i understand that they found him due to advanced dna evidence mm mm-hmm. mhm and, uh, they, it was only the last week that uh, they had an idea about this guy, uh, and uh, you know. But she I had mean, written this book, and in the book, she names this guy as the prime suspect. That's oh. that's a thing. Uh, yeah, because this guy, uh, I guess, was uh, fired for shoplifting. Uh, he shoplifted a hammer, and. Uh, and and they uh, and they fired him from the Auburn Police Department. Yeah. Now the question is going to be how easy or difficult would it be to <coughs> find him guilty at this point or to is prove it? it? You they know? have DNA evidence. Well, they may uh, have that, DNA evidence, but it it, it happened so long ago. There's still a lot of other things that that you need to convict. There were over 50 rapes and how many homicides? Uh, that uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't even, you know, I was there, I guess, when they had the, the you know, uh, the Golden State Killer, but I don't remember the story. So he's a serial it's killer. Right. As a, as, a, as a matter of fact, I watched this documentary they have on Netflix on the um, uh, Bhagwan, uh, what's his name? Oh, you know. I, I saw that. Yeah, the uh, the guy yeah. up in Oregon. Yeah, uh, and uh, I, 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 I kind of knew that was going on, but I didn't really pay much attention to it, you know. Of mine sold them a uh, hundred uh, uh, tables from a company called Amisco. They do these painted, brightly painted yeah. metal tables. Gee, you and, have a link to everything, don't you, Phil? Well, Twelve yes. murders and forty-five rapes. How many wow. murders? Twelve murders oh. and forty-five rapes. Oh, wow! Well. I think that they, uh, from all of those contacts, that they would have collected enough DNA and it tied them into. Uh, all of them? Or? Over how many years? 1970 uh, through 1980s, and the DNA wow. testing at the time period was zero to none. It was 70s, right, uh, yeah. Now, w- the funny thing is, is that it went from 75 to 85, and then it stopped. So uh, I don't know what the guy was doing uh, from 85 till present, but... Uh, like the Zodiac was like that, too. Right? Yeah, but I think this Zodiac stopped because the guy's dead. This or guy's Boston well, Strangler stopped or something too. Right? No, the Boston yeah. Strang did the Boston Strangler stop or did he stop once they caught him? That's what I'm trying to remember. Well, I think they put him in jail. That DeSalvo guy. Albert DeSalvo, yeah. Right, and then I I forget like uh, did something happen? Well, maybe oh, you know they thought it stopped. By the, by the they, way, about the whole memory thing today, uh, you'll hear it next week. But I did a, my uh, an interview with the Bubbles. That won't be on till next week, or maybe I might run it tomorrow night. I don't know. And in it, he says that he has a book of famous personalities, movie personalities, and that he went through it and he wants to see how many of those I could I could identify. Oh and, yeah, and he, gave, he always says you know everything like it. That would be cool. Well, there like are there were there were names that that yeah. no the, these weren't as simple as Hedy Lamar. Mm-hmm. These were his, uh, J. C. Flippin. Right, that's intense. You know, yeah. uh, um, 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 uh, what was his name? Now I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, uh, these were very, <laughs> very obscure names, many of them, and I nailed them. I nailed ninety-nine percent of them. Mm-hmm. And that was, was that before, or after you started to stop the uh, Xanax? Stop the Xanax, yeah. Oh, and I, now we've got more information. I nail, you, if you listen to the show, I nailed ninety nine percent of them, and some of them he was just amazed by. You know, huh. um, so maybe a lot have, of your doesn't bubbles have that thing like um, 
you know those some of those celebrities like the one from Taxi, that girl. No, no, woman. no, no, no. She uh, now she no, has she. They're amazing that they can go back in time. She, yeah, but she, exactly she, yeah, she has a she has an amazing memory. I've had her on the program, but, but Mary Lou Henner. Yeah, she's That's basically her, yeah. she's a human party game. You know, I mean, it's uh, mm -hmm. to see if you can stump her. But no, so but bubbles bubbles, is, bubbles is not as he what he can do is he remembers dates. Uh, uh, he he can remember if I say to him uh, uh, July thirty first uh, uh, nineteen fifty six. What day was it on? Like, he could tell me immediately what day it was. Wow. Mary trick. Lou does that. Yeah, yeah I don't know. That. I don't know what it is and how they but, do it, but it's but it's a trick. No, yeah, it's, it's not a trick. Yeah. Well, no. Then no, there, there's the other part that isn't a trick in which he can actually uh, tell you. Uh, uh, certain things that happen on that day to him. Same thing with Mary Lou Henner. Uh, he I can, forget what they call that, but 60 Minutes had a whole bunch of people that were like that. Well, she was one of them that was on there. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, it's not, it, 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 there is a method to how he does it, but it's it's kind of um, yeah. weird, you know. So, whatever. At fast, he's good at it. Huh? He's good at doing it, you know. Well, but uh, he's he's capable of doing it. I mean, he has the ability to do to do it and re remember uh, certain things that happen to him on certain certain days, you know. So, whatever. Anyway, uh, let me see here. So, where were we? Uh, let's see here. The president has a has a good sense of judgment when it comes to people he wants to hire. This guy, uh, who he wants uh, to head up, what is it? The VA. Yay. Yeah, a yeah. uh, really good choice, Jay. What a he's wonderful, a doctor, what a wonderful he, choice. Yeah, because he he'll give all those soldiers free prescriptions. Now he's and, being railroaded. There is no proof to those. Oh, 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 Phil, 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 Phil. They're all faceless. They say he he got drunk at a party and then literally demolished a government car. Seriously, wait, 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 that's yeah. not no that's not an inference that's on the record phil <laughs> uh, well that's be a shitty record is, is he's been government car you bring it back it's been demolished you ask what happened i crashed it then you check his breath and he's drunk you have a somewhat of an idea of what has gone on you no know, it, it could have been that he backed into somebody's fender too yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, and, and, and what a great you know, ju what a great judge of character. And Rudy Giuliani is going to be another one. You know, he's lucky he's not getting Giuliani vetted for anything because Giuliani would not pass the sniff test. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, oh you man, agreed Giuliani with that. You agreed no with tests. that, Phil. Hmm? You agreed with that I, about Giuliani. He wouldn't pass the I sniff Kevin. test. I like Giuliani. You know, I've met him twice, uh, and uh, he's. <laughs> He, he seems to be. You had to pay to meet him, though, Phil. You had to, very pay. You had to pay to meet him. Yeah, Somebody he, paid to meet him, but I, I got, I got the free ride. Yeah, he seems to me to be very entertaining. So he's more like the clown in the outfit. He, he it's a, I'll tell you the trouble with Giuliani is that I constantly have the feeling when I look at Giuliani, there's some kind of food in his teeth. <laughs> you know, he just has yeah, that look about him. Right. Hi, no, I can't get in with the glass. I mean, my glasses. Hi, Kevin. Are bad. How are you? How are you? It's 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 Alex waving at my at my friends here. See, I have to do this every now and then because I paid uh, a lot of money for this new camera, and I think it looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, Alex. Not the one you're. Not the one. I was going to talk to you about this. Uh, the emperor has no clothes. What? When you had a girlfriend on Friday. You could really tell the difference, you know, when when the split screen was on. Yeah. That, what do you mean? You could tell the difference. I I, I I had two 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 new cameras there. Those were two it's different cameras. There was two new two of the new cameras. This um, last Friday. Is there a depth yeah. of field on this camera or uh, what? You know, is there depth of field? Can you set an f stop on it? So no, I don't have uh, to. No. No. You don't have this to? is a webcam, Phil. Yeah, you're oh, on your left it, camera. I'm not, not, I'm not going to be taking perfect, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> photographs. Plus, the camera you're looking at me with uh, is not that camera. The camera that's on the air is the camera. Okay. Oh, okay. You're on your so, left camera now, aren't you? Huh? You're on your left camera now. What do you mean I'm on my left camera? Well, he's always you're on, on your, a left uh, camera. Your other camera. Well, I have a, uh, there's a, the camera on the, uh, this camera here is the one that you see. 
Right. This one here is the one that they see. Okay. Uh, uh, that yeah. means Kevin was correct. It's on your left. It's on my left, yes. Yeah. Yes. There, Kevin, thank you for explaining it to all of us. Yeah. Yeah, He's always I see the Alex us. Bennett microphone, which is not your normal <laughs> microphone. You're usually on the other one. Oh, no. I just, and, he, and he has a new thingy. No, I took yeah, that one off. Your air I, sign is not in the background. It, well, yes, it is. Oh, oh, it's not. It's not Skype. Oh, I see. see I'm yeah. paying attention. Well, I took this uh, the flag. It's an a. This is what we call a flag in radio. Let me. Yeah, let me flag. This is what they call Alex? a flag. And I, uh, I got it. I had, was on the other microphone, and I said, "Why don't I have it here? You know, it should be here. Let me see here. I should turn it." Whoops. Wow, Alex. you should mute that. What, Charlie? <laughs> we're seeing you know, it backwards the other, anyway. The other night on Friday, when girlfriend was on and the cameras were so clear, mm -hmm. I was watching on the television. I have a big screen that I had it on, mm -hmm. and something else flashes, not just the on air. Something looked like it was blinking, like a photograph or something. No. Smaller. It's Tim conspiracy. I don't know. But all this. Where is Tim here? Yeah, we need a good conspiracy. Well, yes. So, anybody want to talk about the NRA and Russian black money? No? Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Actually, I don't know much about it other than, haha, fuck you, Phil. No, what's the story though? I, I heard something about it today, and I, I heard it out of the side of my head, and I wasn't That's listening, true. paying attention to it. Uh, the, that was my problem too. <laughs> the Russians were doing something with the NRA. They were laundering a shitload of money through the NRA. How okay. do you feel about that one, Phil? Uh, you laundered some of your money through the NRA, didn't you? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, and didn't get his jacket. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I get a card. I bet the Russians got a shitload of jackets. Yeah, um, they probably did. Yeah. My jacket. How do yeah, you it's his jacket. How do you feel about that one, Phil? I'm, I'm, I'm pissed. Huh? Pissed. You're... I'm going to go out and get a uh, AR-15 and, uh, you know, uh, order up some pancakes. So, you see that? That was, you were on the Waffle House by now. That was terrible. Yeah. That was a racist attack, I think. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he knew. She looked like a surprise. All in. What? What? You? No, I haven't read the whole thing yet. No. Oh, okay. He had the AR-15 too. See, they gotta outlaw that gun. Yeah. It's. No, they gotta outlaw guys like uh, the, you know, like his father who gave it to yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. Alex. The father gave him the guns back. Can't we arrest both of them? The kid is mentally ill and the father is mentally yeah. ill, but we don't have a health care system so that we can figure that out before he goes in and shoots up people. So thank you for that, Phil. No, Why don't we have a health care system? We walk in the Republicans got rid of the health care system. I should get the and then the Golden State then and the Golden State murderer uh, it turns out to be a cop. How about that, Phil? Oh, there you yeah. go. A, a, a fire. <laughs> Not a good day for Phil's philosophy of life. Yeah, yeah. Know, you mean Republicans' philosophy of life? You remember nine eleven? The what came out of it was they found that the left hand wasn't talking to the right, that the CIA different and FBI. weren't exchanging information. Well, we have the same problem. So then they developed the Department of Homeland Security, but we have the same problem going on in our mental health systems and our medical systems, <coughs> our schools, the military. That nobody is talking to each other. And well, that's I, uh, I, I, always, I always use my right hand for most everything and my left hand when I want to make it feel like it's somebody else. Mm. So basically, Phil, you're saying that if this was one company or one group of people that had access all the way across the board, that both I, mental health and health care would be a plus to the I did actual not say, company. I did not or say if it was country. one group of people. I did not but, say. But you, but, but you can't talk. I said they don't share information. Right, but I, I own my own company. Why the fuck would I share my information with you? It's that information is public. It's my information. And not only that, but now that we've seen Facebook, it's my money because I have all the data on those people. So I'm not going to share that information with well, you until the government comes up with a health care system. Well, it's oh, so you're going to just hold them hostage and let more guys go around shooting them? You don't care if people die. You don't care if people die. You don't. Oh uh, yeah. Well, hey, I care if children die and babies, you know, and and the unborn. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so the two black women that were shot. Yes, they didn't make it again. 
Yeah. yeah. What? We had what? Wait a minute. What did you say, Jeff? I didn't. Uh, I didn't make uh, Phil's list this time again. Uh, oh, you mean old people? protection? Oh. He doesn't but, protect. But old you know people. what, Phil? We can't young. attack this healthcare, uh, this mental health thing, until we get a healthcare system. So by you, by any NRA member saying uh, that this is a healthcare your, issue, that, that's your take. A mental health care issue is bullshit. Your, your threat, Renee, is no healthcare system. No, no mental, uh, no mental health. No okay. shit. All right, Phil. Phil. Wait, wait a minute. Let's let somebody else talk. Charlene has her hand up. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys just brought up healthcare. Now, you know, I don't know if this is off, but like, what is going on with healthcare? Remember when he got in, he was going to repeal Obamacare. Is there anything going on with that? Or, or no, he didn't get it. He didn't get it repealed. It's just going to die. It's going to die because so the funding going to dry up, we're gonna keep and it's going to die. Have, and yeah. we'll just keep this yeah. in. And, and um, the Republicans don't care that those people are going to die. But, Phil, let's talk about this. Thank God There's, I've got SAG after it. <laughs> uh, there you go. But you know what? Most people don't have unions. And depending on what the corporation, or excuse me, depending on what the Supreme Court comes down with, we won't have unions anymore, depending on which side they come down on. If the Supreme Court, uh, if what they're saying today is they seem to be uh, siding with Trump when it comes to the Muslim ban. Only parts of it. Yeah. Only parts um, of it. So if they're siding with him for that, then they're going to side with him for pretty much everything. No, they're siding. He re, he revised his mandate. And right. they are agreeing with the, with the revisions. as They may agree with the revisions, which are vast, actually. Uh, so uh, it, it really, he didn't get what he wanted. He had to revise it in order to get something that he wanted. Yeah. So, Phil, why is it that you believe that mental health is not something covered under health care? I didn't say Literally. that. No, no, because you said you were saying to me that I don't want to, I, I can't have, I, I'm on the team of you can't have mental health care unless you have health care. No, I didn't say that. You said that you wanted to have one system uh, so uh, so that the information doesn't have to be shared, that it's under one system. And I'm saying there's nothing wrong with the systems, and, and, uh, but if they did share the information, that was the problem we had with uh, 9-11. They uh, created the Department of Homeland Security, uh, which is also failing when it comes to sharing that information, but it was due to the lack of information sharing. That so we- you're talking about the police not being able to... Communicate with the firemen, that kind of thing? No, yeah, I'm he's talking about, about the FBI and the CIA. Not communicating with the... Uh, oh, CIA. Okay, I, I know not what not the CIA. I, I don't know uh, what department it is. But, but if it's a private company, why is it that you think that they should ex- they should turn over private information? It's, it's, it's the uh, president's, um, uh, what do they call it, Secret Service, a private company? No, what are you talking about? A United States government entity? What are we? How did we get here? Because that's what I'm talking about. What? I'm talking about the military. I'm talking about the Secret Service. Now, the kid who shot up the... Uh, the uh, Waffle Re- House. Waffle House. He was arrested by the Secret Service making threats... Oh, at and the White I- House. Right. Get into the White House. You mean that I- tragic Waffle House situation you made a joke about earlier? <clears throat> Well, it's yeah. been 48 hours now. He can joke. Oh, okay. yeah, exactly. The time limit's if, over. If, if you've oh, ever had the food at the Waffle House, it was an improvement when the guy shot it up. Well, that, the lady okay, we're can... back into, I think that the, there's a three-day limit on that joke. So, uh, you Well, know, the uh, YouTube lady, was she not the person who was pushing cabbage as like the greatest health care idea since cabbage was, was invented? True. Oh, you know, all these guys are nuts. Well, well, yeah, but the point is, is we don't have we don't have any way of gauging this, do we, Phil? Uh, we no. have no way of finding out who in the United States is stable and who isn't stable right. prior to them buying a gun. Everybody, is, they don't share the information. There's no database. But most is, people in the United States don't have health care, so why would you think they have mental health care? So therefore, this imaginary information if, that you're talking um, about isn't going to be there to be shared. These, these people have been interacting with the mental health system since they were 10 years old. Let's hear what other uh, people have to say. Yeah. All right. Let's hear what All other right. people have to say. Anybody else want to talk about mental health in the state of America? Or do Kevin? You want to pick something Kevin always has mm-hmm. a, a Jeff. Jeff? 
Yeah. I think that a lot of my doctors are very aware of some of the mental problems that I have. And I don't know how much that information is limited or yeah. public, but I know all the doctors at Yale University know all about it. Because but, their information is totally but is your, shared in their system. Uh, let me so, ask you, though. Are your <laughs> mental problems, Phil, please, uh, are your mental problems uh, uh, due to the heart problems you've had and that they've, they cause a, a certain amount of depression and so on and so forth? Or is this something where you'll go to the Waffle House with a gun? Uh, neither. It's, okay. because, it's because I was taking a drug called Coumadin oh, and... Uh, because of my valve, mm -hmm. and that Coumadin caused a bleeder in my brain, which ultimately called a stroke. I wanted to know why you were talking to us. That explains it. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious. Look, it took me two years to be able to just say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, yeah, is, isn't it some? Isn't sometimes that the the ounce of cure, uh, or the uh, is is more dangerous than the disease itself? I mean, I mean, here was something that gave you a stroke when it was trying to help you with a heart valve right, situation. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's, that's I guess they took you off the Coumadin, but did they replace it with something else? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because I, I was like, thinking. You have, oh, when you, you have a mechanical valve, you have to take Coumadin. Yeah. And, and what did they replace Coumadin with? An uh, AR-15. Well, no, you, you go, you change the valve. So it's oh, and then you won't need it Tissue, any? tissue right. valve, either a pig valve or a My cow valve, pig. whatever. What is, what if, what if you're valve? kosher? Can you have a pig valve? I never had anybody give me a... <laughs> No, oh, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I'm not kill, pig. kidding. Oh, because you're not eating. <laughs> Well, no, but I mean, like, for instance, pigs are also treif in uh, in the Islamic religion as well. I mean, can a person who's an Islamic have a pig valve put in their in their chest? Well, you, did or, you hear what Jeff said? What? Yeah, Jeff. Don't eat I, it. I said it's okay because you're not eating it. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> That's what my rabbi told me. That's yeah. you, oh, did you ask him that question? <laughs> Oh, yeah, why not? Yeah, of course I asked the question. Oh, okay. So I'm not that much of an idiot here to ask it. You know? Uh -oh. Do you have AFib uh, or something? Jeff, or, oh. Jeff, after you got that valve, did you found, find that you started to root around a lot? It's terrible. Hey, he was making a fortune in truffles. He was making a fortune in truffles. Okay, that's all we can say. Oh, you know what? If he could, he would do that because I hear truffles are like seriously expensive. Yes, so they if are. you have the talent to go out and root out truffles, you should go do that. But you yeah. have to go to France to do it, right? Well, yeah, could be. So your life sucks that you have to be in France instead of that's Jeff. Good. Jeff, yeah. do you have AFib or something? Uh, yeah, a little bit of that. Dude. Yeah, that's oh, not, yeah. not really My what is big. That. Your problem was what was your problem that gave you the heart valve? He had a, a, your valves were going, right? Uh, yeah, my uh, original, uh, what I call my mother's valve that she gave me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> leaked. Oh, okay. We decided we had four valves or five. We have four. We have four. Okay, in, you in the heart. Have four. But the, the, the one, the major one is called the aortic valve. Yeah. Uh, and uh, But other people have problems in the mitral valve and other valves. But uh, I, I, I've only had the problem in the, in the aortic valve. I have a minor uh, uh, aortic stenosis. <laughs> but I'm told at my age that's common. Is a, a stenosis is a narrowing. No, of the no, it's a, it's a uh, uh, calcification, actually. Oh, so uh, yeah. We're yeah. going to have the... Now, I got busted by my um, cardiologist. No, but, but I, was I was told that it was very minor. He checks me every couple of years, and oh. it hasn't changed. Oh. So I didn't give you any drug to take it? No, no. Right. And, uh, oh, by the way, uh, just so that your audience knows, tomorrow will be a fill-free zone. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Yeah. No, tomorrow's well, Thursday. Uh, uh, no, it's Thursday, I think. Oh. Oh, good. <laughs> Tonight, okay, or as we like to think of it, word in edgewise night. 
Yeah. Okay, so he's right. It is Thursday. Okay. So and, and what are you doing tomorrow got night? Taken off of, Wait a minute. So on heart stuff, I got taken off of Liptor and I had to get. I got sent over to Crestor. Oh, that's so. what I take. Yeah. I Sometimes I, like I, I found I couldn't. I didn't tolerate Lipitor well, so they mm -hmm. put me on Crestor. You know, and it's been fine. You know, I don't even know I'm taking it. And did I'm, you see a major difference between your Lipitor numbers and your Crestor numbers, or were they about the same? Um, my numbers, my number, I get about a year ago, all of a sudden, I met, I think I told you, my, my um, uh, what do you call it? My numbers just went sky high, and I was on Crestor. Oh, you had forgotten to take the pills, right? And, and well, what, I, I don't know why or why that happened, but I went back months later and had another blood test, and I was well below what I should be. You know, I mean, I was, That's I was, weird. and it had taken a complete 180 around the other way. And what it was <laughs> is I suddenly realized, I think one month I forgot to take the Crestor, that I, I put them in this little thing and that I didn't put the Crestor in there because I found I had an extra bottle of Crestor than I usually had. So what oh. happened is during that month I didn't take the Crestor. It went sky high and, you know. But uh, no, I now I'm below. All my numbers are below, and even my my good cholesterol went up. So you know, excellent. You know, I'm in I'm in good uh, good shape. There we go with medicine again. Yeah. Thanks for the information, though. I needed oh. it. Charlene uh, yeah. shooting oh, oh. Uh, uh, La Santa Cecilia. It's a it's a it's a group, uh, a, a Spanish group. Uh, yeah, they'll probably let you do the first number from backstage, and then you'll be all pissed that you wasted the night and didn't spend it with us. So there. Alex? <laughs> yes, I have, yes, I Charlotte. Have a waiting room med question. Oh, here we I, go. I'm on a high blood pressure. Um, God, what is it? I forget it. What name? You guys is? are too sick for me to hang around. Can I say that oh, right me. now? Real. You know, to be on this show, you got to be blind, cripple, or crazy. Yeah. So well, hang on. Let Charlene finish her question. Yeah, I need advice. Because okay. I wasn't taking it. Like, do you have to take the blood pressure at the same time every day to regulate? Because I was, like, vomiting one day. And I said, maybe it's because I was off the blood pressure. I took it. You know, I forgot I, to take it. I don't think it. that would cause vomiting. No? no. Okay. Uh, because I know my cholesterol medication I have to take right before I go to bed because it works better. Is that what, oh. do you know when your medication works best, Charlene? Well, that's good advice to take the cholesterol at night. Blood pressure, do you think I should take it at the same time? Every day? I have no idea. I take all my I take all mine at the same time. And what that's used that's what I do in the what morning. used to be one pill don't. that I would take is now seven. <laughs> you know? Slowly every year the doctors have snuck in another one and another one and another one, you know. I take a, I take another pill to help the crest door even work better. What? Yeah, that's why my Just numbers are so forget low. In the first place, that's, why were they given another medication? Because, uh, because, you know, that was when we suddenly saw it jump up like it did. And then oh, when I took this other back. stuff, I went down. I, I really very low on everything. So, you know. Well, there we go. Another show on medicine, folks. That's right. Uh, uh, this time it was Renee's fault. <laughs> what what is it, Farben? You wrote. Did Phil know the serial kill murderer uh, ex cop <laughs> caught today? Yeah. Uh, did you know him personally? Yeah, he was a uh, Gabnet. Uh, he he's on Gabnet almost every night. Really? <laughs> and his name is Kevin. I see. Okay. <laughs> sure. Well, listen. You guys can call tomorrow night and get a word in edgewise because Phil won't be That's, here. That'll be new. It, it, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, I won't call either, and then you definitely oh, No, 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 please, Renee, please call tomorrow night. Play. Yeah, you too, Phil Tony. filibusters. Yeah. It you gives too. you a chance to uh, put out your propaganda without anyone saying anything uh, uh, to the contrary. Propaganda? Well, see, if they have an intelligent comment about facts, then please say it, because I'm not always right. Matter of fact, I'm not that great well, at being I right. used to so say, Well, as I, as I used to say on radio, which was unusual for... Right for a talk show host, as I said, you know, don't take everything I say as being the God's honest truth. I could be wrong. And no talk show host ever says that. I could be wrong. Phil never says it. Nah, I'm never wrong. Of course he's never wrong. Thanks, Phil. I'm right. Have a good time taking pictures of people doing the flamenco or whatever that thing is going to be. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Tony, good talking to you. No dog tonight. What'd you do, kill him? 
Shame on me. Shame what? on you, Sorry. Renee. Shame on you. Sorry. Wasting another two hours on this program. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Renee. Hope we see you tomorrow night. I'll, I'll need people tomorrow night because Phil isn't going to be there. Uh, 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 same thing with you, Jeff, but I can count on you tomorrow night. Charlie, give us a call tomorrow night. Kevin, I want you here tomorrow night, okay? Hey, thank right. you for uh, playing the uh, interview tonight. It was uh, it was yeah. excellent. Good. Well, I'll have to determine whether I'm going to put it up or not. I don't know. I'm just a little mad at the reception of it. But Put it up. Yeah. Put it up. Yeah. Put it up. All right. They're ganging up on me. Anyway, I, I, what it would be nice if all you people did was uh, was give wave goodbye to our folks out there and uh, say goodbye. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's our citizen panel for tonight. And they uh, let me get rid of them and let me close down Skype here because I have to close down Skype so the next show can use it. And the next show is the intersection with Jack and Amy, which is over most of this gab net. Uh, tomorrow night it's uh, Damian Chaplin at 9.30 and then uh, again at, uh, oh, Connections tonight at 1 o'clock, I forgot to mention that. Then uh, tomorrow night uh, at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, Daylight Time, we'll be back again. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.